guys welcome back to my channel so today as you can tell by the title we are talking about comebacks in the month of february if you watched the video of me reviewing january comebacks you already know this but disclaimer i know that not every comeback is included in this list i'm sorry if you don't hear me talk about a comeback that you wanted me to discuss it's just the way it is. I cannot fit every single comeback into this video. I will also be including pre-releases, debuts, and Japanese releases in this video, so it's not just exclusive to title tracks. But before we get into the video, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Clootbox. Clootbox is a subscription service box filled with merchandise from your favorite K-pop groups such as clothing, posters and photo cards, stationery, plushies, Korean snacks, and more. Clootbox ships worldwide and has a variety of boxes you can choose from customized to each specific group. Getting started with your subscription is easy, and Clootbox allows you to customize your box based on your clothing size, your bias in the group you want merch from, and what albums you have. You can also upgrade your box to receive more Korean snacks plus more merchandise that's also higher in value. Currently, Clootbox is doing a seasonal subscription box instead of their usually monthly due to shipping being delayed because of COVID-19, so if you have shopped with them previously, please expect changes with your shipping. We all know that buying merch can be expensive and stressful, and there's such a large variety of merch to choose from. But Clootbox makes shopping for your favorite groups easy by surprising you with new items, and the cost of Clootbox is equivalent to that of one t-shirt or album. Clootbox is also now selling official light sticks from a variety of groups, so go check that out if you're interested. For 5% off your Clootbox, use my code REDVELVETSUS at check out. Thank you so much to Clootbox for sponsoring this video. But yeah, now that that's clear, let's get into this month's comebacks. First up is Eat My Love by BB. I unfortunately don't have much to say about this song. Someone recommended this song to me and I really don't feel that passionately about it. I don't like it, but there's really nothing about this song that makes me passionately like it or dislike it. It was pretty generic to me and I stopped thinking about this song the second it was over. It reminds me of a song you'd only hear in an elevator or in a dentist's waiting room, which is probably why it didn't stand out to me. I've come to realize I just don't really like BB's music. If you like her music, more power to you, but I just don't think her music is for me. I give this comeback a 3 out of 10. Next up is Good Girl by Hannah. Okay, so this song was much better than I'm Not Cool, but not by a lot. I feel like one of the only people who just really isn't a fan of Hyanna and her style strikes me very much as like I'm different and quirky and that's not a jab at Hyanna as a person that's just the vibe her music gives me kind of similar to Itzy. In the future I'd like to see her experiment a little bit more. We all know she can kill a good old-fashioned sexy concept but I'd really like to see her change up her look and sound even just a little bit. Then again I'm not super familiar with her music so maybe there's more to her discography than the impression that I'm getting but overall I give this song a 6 out of 10. Next Next up is Sugar by Kim Woo I wasn't the biggest fan of this song, I did like parts of it, but I feel like this song was kind of missing something and I was waiting for something to make it feel complete. However, I really like Kim Moo voice and I really liked the concept. Even though I didn't really like the song that much, he definitely has potential and I'll be looking out for his releases in the future. Out of a 10, I'd give this comeback a 6. Okay, so I don't really have much to say about this song. It was good, their voices sounded nice, but what the fuck was the music video? I don't know if it was just me, but I felt so awkward watching it because it was more like a performance than an MV and they just kept staring at me. It was so weird, the outfits were bad. SM as always didn't check the calendar and gave them a Christmas themed song in February. It was just so weird. I usually don't care much about music videos, but there was something so unsettling to me about this music video that I had to talk about it. But if I were to rank the song by itself, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Next up is Bicycle by Chunga. Y'all, this song was so bad. Like, I can't sugarcoat it at all. This song was atrocious. I knew the second I saw the teasers, I wasn't going to like it, but I did not think I would hate it this much. It sounds like a rejected Blackpink song. Let me just go through a list of everything I hated about this song. Number one, the line, it's freaking over. That sounds like me in seventh grade when I refused to swear. Number two, her rap. Chunga can't rap and that's fine. I need these idols to learn how to be content with not being able to rap. She's much better at singing and dancing than rapping and that's what she's known for. I've never ever needed to hear her rap and I respectfully hope she never does again. Number three, the excessive English. Hopefully I'll make a video on this eventually, but I hate excessive English in K-pop songs because it just tanks the quality. 
and I used to not understand why, but this comeback really put it together for me. Whenever K-pop artists add a lot of English to their songs, the focus shifts to creating quote-unquote cool and trendy lyrics, aka misusing AAVE, instead of the song itself. Quality takes a back seat and the topical lyrics become the focus, which most of the time don't really make sense to native English speakers. Overall, this song was just bad. Her album, on the other hand, was good and I really like the song Lemon. But once again, I have to criticize this because I need Chunga to free herself from the chains that are collaborations with these random ass men. Chunga has enough talent all on her own and I don't understand why she invites all of these mediocre male rappers to hop on a track with her. I'd really like to see her focus on building her own discography because it feels like she relies too heavily on collaborations. Overall, I'd give this comeback a 1 out of 10. Next up, we have Da Da Dance by Eyes One. <laughs> I really do hate to say this because I said this about their last comeback, but this song was boring. Their music is so similar that I've started to notice that they keep doing that move where they press their pointer finger and thumb together and will like fake blow a kiss. I don't know how to describe it, but I've seen it in almost every comeback of theirs. Like every time I listen to Aizwan's music, I feel like I'm just watching the same music video and listening to the same song over again. And it clearly works for them because Korea loves them, but I just don't like their music. I'm not sure if this is their last song before disbandment, but hopefully they leave on a stronger note because this really wasn't doing it for me. I don't know, maybe Aizwan's music just isn't for me, but I feel like their company has kind of fallen into the pattern G-Friend did where they're so scared to stray from their formula that every comeback just sounds the same now. Out of a 10, I give it a 4. Next up, we have Wings by Pixie. Everybody talks about noisy 4th gen boy group music, but we can't pretend like 4th gen girl groups aren't hopping on the same bandwagon. This comeback was exactly that. It had almost all of my pet peeves wrapped up into one song, unnecessary rapping, pointless chanting, and pretending like dance breaks make up for a lack of chorus, bridge, or ending. This is their debut, so I won't write them off completely, but I feel like this will melt right into the plethora of boy groups and girl groups debuting this year with the same concept. I give it a 4 out of 10. Next up is Paranoia by Kang Daniel. I don't want this to sound like a jab, but I really did not think that Kang Daniel had the type of range to pull off this type of concept or song, but he really proved me wrong. I'm not super familiar with him, but I kind of always saw him as like a goody two-shoes, largely due to the fact that he's so popular in Korea and that's usually the type of image they like for a male idol. But this comeback really impressed impressed me. The song was really good, the concepts and visuals were cool. Like I really did not expect to like this comeback as much as I did, but he really popped off this month and I think it might be one of my favorite comebacks of the month. Out of a 10, I give it an 8. Next up is Can We Talk Again by Purple Kiss. So I have to confess, I'm not really sure if this is their debut song or a pre-release. I've been hearing about Purple Kiss since last year and I was under the impression that they had already made their debut, but I guess not. If you're familiar with them, please let me know in the comments. But I was honestly very taken aback by this song because it's so different from what girl groups lately have been releasing. I honestly kind of miss hearing girl groups release ballads as title tracks. I know that girl groups still release ballads, obviously, but usually they're unpromoted b-sides that are overlooked. Once again, I might be wrong about this being their debut, so I may eat my words with this one, but this song was good. However, I didn't like the rapping, and you guys know how I feel about excessive rapping at this point, but it didn't completely taint the song for me. I give it a 6 out of 10. Next up, we have Excalibur by Kingdom. Another example of me liking the concept way more than the song. I do not feel passionately about Excalibur at all. It was kind of forgettable to me. I'm sure there are people out there who probably love the song, which I can understand. But what really attracted me was the concept. The concept was beautiful and the music video was gorgeous. I really love the royalty concept and I hope to see other groups go all out with it like Kingdom did. I think this comeback and this whole video actually is really just an example of how a flashy concept can make a song you don't like way more bearable. But rating the song itself, out of 10, I'd give it a 5. Next up is Don't Call Me by Shiny. This comeback was a real letdown for me. Shiny is one of the only second gen boy groups still around and I was really hoping their comeback would inspire a new trend amongst boy groups, but instead they hopped on the fourth gen boy group trend. I was imagining Don't Call Me to be an R&B vocal heavy breakup track that was very heartfelt and sultry, but instead it ended up being a very angry song and it didn't really suit my taste. I feel kind of guilty trashing on this song because I want to let their fans enjoy their comeback untainted, but then again it's not like my opinion on this song is gonna tank Shiny's career or anything. I give it a 4 out of 10.
I feel kind of the same way about this song as I do Wings by Pixie. It didn't really do much for me and I feel like this once again is going to melt into the sea of girl groups and boy groups debuting this year with the same concept. Like Wings, I give it a 4 out of 10. Next up we have Beautiful by ONF. This song really sounds like a theme for a superhero show and it brought me so much joy. I really like the harmonies in the chorus. You rarely ever hear K-pop groups harmonize like this nowadays. It's usually just members singing one at a time or in unison, with the closest thing to harmonizing being backup vocals. The music video was kind of cringy, but in a good way if that makes sense. I didn't really like this song at first, but by the third listen, I was fully singing along to it, so in the end, it won me over. Out of a 10, I'd give it a 7. Next is All or Nothing by We I. Typical, angry, fourth gen boy group music, and I feel like this is a controversial thing to say because boy group stands get real defensive over their alts noisy music, but that's really the only way I can describe it. There was nothing about this song that appealed to me. I heard that they had a cuter concept before switching to a dark one for this concept, and I'd have to say I strongly recommend going back to the cute one. A lot of boy groups only switch to a dark concept because they think it'll attract western fans, even though this concept isn't that successful internationally and it especially isn't in Korea, especially nowadays. Overall, I just didn't enjoy this comeback and I give it a 2 out of 10. Next up we have Goddamn by I Am of Monsta X. This is honestly peak SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> I really have so little to say about this song aside from that I didn't really like it, it's not my style. I'm sure other people love it and if you do, I am happy for you. This song just really isn't for me. Out of a 10, I'd give it a 3. Next up is Blues by Wonho. Okay, so this is really my first introduction to Wonho. I've never really listened to Monsta X's music aside from like one or two songs. So I was really unfamiliar with him, but this was a good song. There were some parts of the song that I felt like were a little out of his range, but for the most part, this was a good song. I will be paying Wonho's rent, aka streaming Blues like 100 million times. But yeah, this was a good comeback and I would give it a 6 out of 10. And last we have Tail by Sunmi. I really truly think that February was the month of me loving the concept but not liking the song. <laughs> I really love that Sunmi fully embraces the sexy concept and brings something different to the table every time. I didn't really like the song that much though but I can see why other people do. Hopefully it'll grow on me the more I listen to it but I like the concept and I need Sunmi to release a full album. <laughs> it's been years and all we have are singles and like two EPs. We need a full album, and maybe it's wishful thinking, but I hope we'll get it by the end of the year. But yeah, back to the song, I would give this comeback a 5 out of 10. Anyways, that's all for this month's comebacks, you guys. I'm sorry that I didn't really have much to say, but unfortunately there weren't a lot of good comebacks this month in my opinion, as you can probably tell by my rankings too. I was sort of let down by these comebacks and I feel like February will be kind of forgettable in comparison to the rest of 2021. But yeah, that is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye!